has been paid for by the WZWA Network. Ladies and fucking gentlemen, welcome to the WZWA Network in our review show here of WrestleMania Backlash Motherfucker on the 8th of May 2022. I'm your host with the most on the West Coast, California in Fury. And if you tuned in to our Impact Wrestling review yesterday, and I say our, I really mean mine, you'll see, you know, that I'll, I did it by myself because uh, Juicy Boy, I don't want to overwork him. Thinking today we'd be doing this review. To, he's dropping the ball, man. Juicy Boy, if you want, you're dropping the ball, bro. This is, this is, this is what happened, okay? He... Found out a spoiler of the show. Spoiler. I mean, the pay-per-view already, had already aired. By the time uh, it was about time to start watching the damn thing, he'd been spoiled by one of the results of the matches, put him in a bad mood, got his knickers in a twist, and he didn't feel like watching the show. How immature is that? Juicy boy, you're on, you're on thin ice, bro. You're on thin ice. Okay, let's 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 get on with it. WrestleMania backlash. First and foremost, just call it backlash. Just call it fucking backlash, man. Um, I really don't like the addition of the word WrestleMania to it. It's just a little tacky as far as I'm concerned. Um, and it cheapens the WrestleMania brand because you know, backlash, we 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 know what the word backlash means by now. It's a backlash was a pay-per-view name for a long fucking time. We don't need to fuck with it. Okay. Is this a game WWE always like uh, fixing things that don't need fixing? Anyway. <clears throat> wow. Pyro to start the show, followed by a terrible pay per view theme song. I don't know who's in charge of this stuff, but can we please get back to the rock and roll? Please. Hard rock music, alternative rock, whatever. Let's get back to rock music and wrestling. Let's get on with the show. First matchup on the pay-per-view. And I still call them pay-per-views. I don't give a fuck what you want to call them now. It's a PPV pay-per-fucking-view. Cody Rhodes, the American Nightmare, taking on Seth Rollins. So here's the thing, right? I've, I've disliked Seth Rollins for a long time, and not because he's a good heel or whatever. I disliked him even more when he was a babyface. Um, and as many of you may know, I have not been a very big fan of Cody Rhodes over the last few years, uh, even to the point of saying things like, he is my most despised person in wrestling right now. So to me, it's, it's really weird going into this. I watched their match at WrestleMania. I really enjoyed that match. And I'll never take anything away from them in the ring. I think they always have great matches, but it's just like the way that they would act on social media. Cody was much worse. The way they would act on social media, the way the things that Cody would say in interviews, um, the the ideas that he would come up with for himself in AEW and the angles that he would have. It, he rubbed me the wrong way the whole time. And I don't know what it is, but since I watched him do the uh, interview with Stone Cold, and seeing these two matches, it's like that hatred that I had for him has washed away. And I can't believe it. Sammy Guevara now has that crown of the person I dislike the most in wrestling and think that they do not deserve the position that they're in whatsoever. Um, but Cody, for whatever reason, it's washed away and has nothing to do with, oh, you must be a fucking WWE stan. No, like I don't watch the weekly product in WWE because I know it's shit. I'm mad at the WWE for fucking up the Hall of Fame by making the Royal Rumble shit this year. I'm always mad at them. I haven't watched them full-time properly in like 15 years. So it has nothing to do with that. But I think he's carrying himself better now. I think he should never have been in a management position. He should have never had his hand in his own angles. What I really think Cody needs is to just be in the WWE take their direction and do the best he can with it because so far so good as far as I'm concerned. So let's get on with it. Um, it's unbelievable how he's been received by the WWE audience. And I'm not going to say universe, although I just did, 
because I hate the term WWE universe. But the audience have just taken to him so so well. And you consider the reactions he was getting in AEW really strange how in WWE he is at the moment universally, it appears, uh, adored by these uh, these fans. Um, very good psychology early in the match. Uh, very impressed at one stage. Referee, don't know his name because they're all faceless, nameless referees now. Um, I was very impressed at one stage he switched hands. He went one, two, and then whatever happened, they rolled through and there was another count and he went with the left hand. I was like, I noticed that. Very impressive. Uh, <laughs> because if I did a count with my left hand, you could tell I'm right-handed. Um, there was a stalling superplex that got the crowd louder and louder as Cody held him. Really cool stuff. I love the part of the match where there was the chops back and forth then it slaps to the face. Then they're just punching back and forth. Man, that was really cool. That made the crowd get a little unglued for a moment there. Um, I still don't like the Cody cutter. I don't think that that move makes any sense whatsoever. Um, this was a hell of a match. Uh, it could have been over from Seth's frog splash. The crossroads uh, reversal after the superplex from Seth was very good too, uh, followed by another kick out from the pedigree. I was like, this is a solid match. This is really good. Maybe not as good as the WrestleMania match, but fuck, it was close. Cody wins with a great finish. He won up Seth with the roll-up pin and using the tights. Um, the obvious thing would be Seth getting his win back, but nope, they didn't do that. So I think good work on that. You know, keeping us on our toes. No foregone conclusions. Right. Next up, Omas taking on Lashley. Sorry, I'm a bit thirsty. Um, bro, okay. So WrestleMania, these two had this great fucking big man match. I really enjoyed it. And you, you just see immediately these fucking assholes on social media shitting on the match, shitting on Omos, saying, oh, they've given up on him now. Man, it's a story. Let it play out. I mean, you fucking say it every other time. And now look at this. Now he's with MVP. And, you know... In this case, yes, he needed to get that win back. And I think Omos has improved so fucking much. For a guy his size, the quick way that he moves, I think he's he's, he's a future fucking world champion. How could you not? It'd be unrealistic that this guy could not win the world title. He just needs a few more tools along the way to get there. I like the slow burn with him. They're not, they're not blowing their load on him too early. You know, and hopefully in a couple of years' time, he's not like the great Carly and ends up like fucking being, you know, a dancing fucking, oh, it's so funny because he's so big and he can dance. Fuck off. I hate all that shit. Anyway, um, I wrote, if he loses, I swear to God, which there's nothing I would do about it except just bitch about it on the review. They nearly got me on the hurt lock. I thought for a second then they were going to have Omos pass out and I was about to, I was about to throw my computer. And uh, luckily that, that did not happen. Omos ends up winning the fucking match thanks to MVP fucking Javin. Lashley in the throat with his cane. This is great. It establishes MVP and Omos and the addition of MVP to the uh, Omos Act now will propel Omos. He's getting to learn different ways of of, of dealing with different different situations by having that guy who can be in his ear. So I think it's great. And I really think WWE need to consider maybe having a couple more managers on the roster. Uh, MVP Paul Heyman, cool. I'm sure LA Knight is going to be doing something at some point, but, you know, um, I think managers are very uh, underrated as far as what they can do to get a talent over or help them, uh, at least in that character's story. So at that point, I was very impressed with the pay-per-view. Edge versus AJ followed up next. Um, I was hoping for an improvement on the Mania match, which I personally felt was a little flat. I didn't like the finish, really. Um, I just thought, man, I thought that WrestleMania match was going to be an all-time fucking classic. And this was a good match, but I still kind of feel like AJ and Edge have not had that match that we're looking for yet, that, that all-time classic. 
that we all expected when Edge first returned and those two clashed in the Rumble. So for me, it just, it, I don't know what it is. It's just, I didn't leave the match going, oh, that was fucking good. You know, like after you come when you have sex and you're like, ah, oh. it's a weird comparison to make, but it's true though. You get that feeling like, wow, well, I just went through something fucking awesome. Um, AJ, he's still got it, man, you know, and I'm sure he hates hearing people say that because he, there's never been a point where you could question that. But the acai moonsault from him, I was very impressed. I don't think I'd ever seen him do that before. It's usually a springboard or some shit to the outside. So it is aged now and he's still doing that shit. Fucking props. Um, that catapult into the ring post from Edge on AJ. Hectic stuff. Well done, AJ. Uh, great spot with the turnbuckle pad. Edge uh, pulling it off and end up ends up colliding with it after an attempted spear. Um, as we're getting towards the end of the match, you know, this is what I'm... I think this is what may be the problem. Because WrestleMania uh, against AJ had Damian Priest do his interference. Here we have someone else doing interference to join the group. We're not getting that sequence of false finishes and suspense because we've got this bit of story to worry about. Perhaps that might be what is hurting the finishes of these matches. But that being said, you can still have this moment where another person has uh, interfered and jo to join Edge's group, and you could have still had those false finishes before that took place. So what the fuck am I going on about? Um, so the mystery person uh, drops AJ off onto the top rope, and I knew immediately who it was because they should have ensured that she was wearing different pants um, because I've studied Rhea Ripley, uh, I know what her pants look like, um, not just because I want to get in them, but but because, um, you know, the design. And I know her legs. Her legs, her body is of a different, it's nothing like hers as far as I'm concerned. Um, she's just got a different type of physique, and I knew it was her straight away. That's why you think, you know, someone's... Uh, a star because you could see a silhouette of Rhea Ripley and I reckon I'll be able to pick out that it's her. That's the point I'm trying to make. Um, so I think it was bad camera work on, on, on that behalf uh, by being able to see her pants. But then again, she shouldn't have been wearing them in the first place. She should have had something else on. That's just me. Uh, anyway, AJ ends up passing out from the cross face. The commentators yelling out, who is he? No. It's, it's a shame. Rhea Ripley has joined Edge's stable. I, I believe it's called Judgment Day. That's what someone told me. I haven't been watching the weekly programming, so I should probably pay more attention to that shit, but there's only so many hours in a day. Um, so I hope this stable becomes like a, like a super stable. Like I'm talking like seven or eight people. Remember, we haven't had one of them in a while. I think the last one we may have had was like an impact with a mortal, a mortal, you know, WWE. I can't remember one since fucking like, I'm talking like a super stable, like the ministry of darkness or the corporation, you know, like a, a big stable of people, NWO, whatever. You don't need 30 people though, but like eight, nine people that will be, I just would find that interesting for once to see this massive group uh, form instead of it always being like just four or five people. No, nah, come on. Come on, give me what I want. Give me what I want. Um, so anyway, yeah, again, the match didn't blow, blow me away, but it was still good. It was all right. Nothing wrong with it. Moving forward. Okay. Charlotte takes on Ronda Rousey for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Sorry, I'm really thirsty. Um, some of my issues with WW pay-per-views is this, is like they plod along so slowly through the pay-per-view. So lucky I watch it after it airs live so I can keep skipping ahead to get to the next match. Um, but my issue is like one match after another, and these matches have been going so long. Each match went real long. I need some more palate cleansers when I'm watching a WWE pay-per-view. Uh, at this point of the show, perhaps like a women's tag title match would have been good 
something a little different. Um, so to, to be walk, okay, this Charlotte Ronda thing, this is going to go 20. This is going to go 25 minutes maybe. Uh, and when I look at the card, I realize, man, this is a, sh- uh, pardon me, <laughs> fucking hell. This is a short card. One, two, three, four, five, six matches on a three-hour pay-per-view. Are you kidding me? Six matches? That's insane. <laughs> so this is the only women's match on the show. You've got a US title. You've got an Intercontinental title. You've got another women's ta- uh, women's um, world title. You have all these belts, and they never get represented on the show. I don't know why you bother having them. Anyway, let's get into it. Uh, early on, Ronda took a hectic German suplex, bro. Fuck. Uh, and by the way, I think the Piper's Pit is a terrible, terrible finishing move. The jumping uh, arm bar from Ronda, where she like kind of jumped up onto uh, Charlotte's shoulders and uh, rolled her into an arm bar was fantastic. Um, I really didn't like the mic being used for the I quit. I, I didn't mind it later on, but early on, I, I kind of found it annoying. Um, but again, this wasn't a submission match. This was an I quit match. So I should shut the fuck up. Um, I didn't like when they got up to near the entrance way and Charlotte walked backstage and then five seconds later, she walked out with two kendo sticks. I just thought to myself, that's why would she find two kendo sticks in, in gorilla? Just to me, I just thought that was a bit silly and contrived. Um, but the fact that there were weapons that made this a palate cleanser in the end, but I just thought, man, it's too long. I know you got to tell a story and shit, and that's cool, but you need some variety on pay-per-views, I think. And I think, you know, having a wham, bam, thank you, man, kind of, uh, you know, six-minute match here or there. There's nothing wrong with that. Not every match has to go fucking 25 minutes. No wonder WrestleMania goes for two days and fucking nine hours in total. Um Anyway, uh, the armbar hanging from the top rope, that was really uh, confronting to see. Uh, And one thing I want to say, Charlotte gets uglier. (laughs) And I don't mean this in a bad way, as the match wears on. She comes out, she's all dolled up. As the match wears on, her face gets red, her her makeup gets all messed up, her hair gets all fucked up. I think it's actually a really cool part of the character that she's this queen and she's all beautiful and dolled up before the match. But then as it wears on, she just becomes this horrible fucking mess of a woman uh, trying to fucking win. Uh, So I like it. I like it. I like it. Uh, Charlotte uh, and Ronda is back and forth war. Eventually Ronda has her in, uh, or Ronda was in some sort of fucking submission hold. It must've been the uh, figure eight. I liked when uh, the referee held the mic in her mouth and she said, Never, bitch. That was dying. Uh, finally, with the use of a steel chair and having an armbar submission through that chair, Ronda makes Charlotte quit. Ronda wins, becomes a SmackDown Women's Champion. And in the end, I thought that was cool. That was a cool match. But um, I don't know where they go with Ronda from here. Um, if they continue this feud with Charlotte, I'd be surprised. Um Nonetheless, moving forward, uh, probably the low light of the show, and that's not on either of these competitors because I think that they had a good match. But it's Madcap Moss against Happy Corbin. Uh, I know a lot of people out there do pop for the Happy Corbin gimmick. I, for one, I don't, I'm not still not sold on it. Uh, Madcap Moss, uh, I don't know anything about him really. I just know he tells jokes. Uh, I don't like his outfit. Um, and I just thought immediately, this is going to be something that I don't, that I don't care about, isn't it? This, we'll see what happens. Moss really needs new ring attire, bro. Like after this, now the feud's over. I really think they need to kind of update his look and repackage him a little bit. Um, and I don't like the name Madcap Moss, to be honest, either. Like Riddick Moss is fine. Um, WWE is just too polished. When I look at the, the show, and I look at the way it's all set out. It's just too polished, man. I want. I need something a little more gritty. You know what I mean? Fuck. Um, I wrote also, why the fuck is Corbin hitting a choke slam? He's not that big. Uh, I did also write, this is kind of boring. I think it's just because I wasn't invested in the uh, story going into it. Uh, the only thing that really annoyed me in the match is Pat McAfee calling Corbin big dog. 
It's, I don't know. Pat just seems to not really think before he says things sometimes. Uh, the, the sunset flip from Mad Cat onto um, Corbin. To get the surprise win, I thought that was a nice way to go about it. Protected Corbin a bit. And uh, the, it's very hard to execute a sunset flip that perfectly. And I think he did a great job. So it was a good little win for him. But uh, <clears throat> as far as like keeping me invested in either of these characters going forward, I think some changes need to take place. Whether Corbin joins Edge's group and goes back to being like that kind of dark. They wouldn't do that. It's, it's too far gone now, isn't it? Right. I should have drank that whole fucking thing before I started this. Okay. Main event time. Again, six matches, dude, on a three-hour fucking pay-per-view. You could have done 12. You could have done 12. You know? Fucking hell. These matches went for so long. It's okay. Like, you, I'll get to it. I'll get to how I feel overall after this. I guess this... Uh, Main event was taking place because maybe Roman is a little injured or maybe they're just trying to figure out a way to prolong this thing with him and Drew before the, I guess they're going to get to that clash at the castle show in, um, in Wales. Um, who knows? I would assume that Drew's going to main event that show. Um, 617 days. That's fucking insane, dude. Like that's where we're at right now with his title reign. And I checked out Pedro Morales. Uh, he's the next guy in line, I believe. He's got like a thousand and ninety-seven days or some shit like that. I should have written it down, but Drew is never. I mean, sorry, Roman is never catching that one. The fact that we got this far is pretty good. Um, I wish they would make the world titles look different. I'm. I don't know. As far as I'm concerned, universally, I feel like almost every wrestling fan that I know hates those titles with the fucking logo on it it's so ugly um you know I, I wouldn't be offended if cody did end up becoming world champion and wanted that fucking winging eagle belt to come back because that's what it should be fuck you um okay so the match starts there's a moment where reigns gets tagged in and it looks like it's going to be him and drew and then he just fucking tagged back out that was fantastic um, I found Pat McAfee's laugh to be annoying during this match. Uh, that's when he, he laughed and I was like, shut up. <laughs> and I like Pat McAfee, but sometimes in commentary, he annoys me. I assume Roman's arm injury with Brock is what made this a six man. Cause you know, I don't think Roman's really wrestling a shitload on TV at the moment. Um, I miss the days of when the flash photography went off in the crowd as people are hitting big moves. I remember when Kane would do the big clothesline off the top rope and it'll just be this flicker of lights in the crowd. I miss that. I mean, I'm sure people are taking pictures, but everyone's phones are fucking, you know, such great quality that they probably don't need flash. But yeah, I miss those days. Um, I liked the part of the match where Roman tagged in and he thought he was safe but then uh i guess it was riddle or orton managed to i think it was riddle managed to get the tag to drew and then roman's like oh shit i thought that was really well sold um the suspense was built well uh michael cole got to say his vintage orton bullshit um rko on reigns that was pretty fucking cool uh, i also like the no sell of the super kick into the RKO, even though I don't like people not no selling super kicks, I let that one slide because it was really cool. Riddle got his shit in. Uh, there was a this is awesome chant, and that actually had some excitement behind it. What do you fucking know? Uh, Drew gets the announce table set up. You know, this thing went about 18 minutes or so. Uh, then Drew went through the fucking table, and I wrote, Yeah, and now I think the bloodline have got this. Um, bunch of dives took place after that it was getting fucking hectic they really like as we were heading toward the finish of the match the craziness the suspense uh it all started kicking to an even higher gear uh so props to the uh six men in this matchup for being able to to pull off something great and i think maybe the agenting might have helped as well um so after this, there's a top rope RKO. Whilst Riddle's hitting this RKO, Roman managed to tag one of the uh, Usos who was taking this move. 
managed to get a sneaky tag in, which no one saw because you're too busy looking at that RKO. Great fucking finish, bro. Uh, and no pun intended saying, bro, uh, Riddle gets fucking speared to fuckery. Reigns pins Riddle. It's over. Great fucking last half of the match, you son of a bitch. So there you have it. That's my review of WrestleMania Backlash. Uh, and I have to say this. I enjoyed day one on January 1st. I enjoyed that pay-per-view. I hated the Rumble. I did not enjoy Elimination Chamber very much. I thought it was boring. I really liked WrestleMania and I enjoyed Backlash here today. I'm going to probably give Backlash a 7 out of 10. Um, it didn't blow me away. It was serviceable, but it's just they're still not quite there yet as far as I'm concerned, the WWE. Even though I loved WrestleMania, I really did love WrestleMania. Um, they, they really went to the well there to try and make that one a good WrestleMania. There's some improvement that I see here, but, you know, that's the thing with WWE. Sometimes they're really fucking good. And then, then the next thing, you know, it's back to being fucking awful again because there's just so much red tape behind the scenes there. It leads to uh, a poor, uh, I guess, um, uh, poor creative, uh, poor execution of, of certain things because there's too many cooks in the kitchen back there and a 70-plus-year-old man running the fucking show still. Uh, I think that's their main problem. but. Props to WWE for a fine pay-per-view here today. I'm California Fury. This is the fucking WCWA Network. This was our review show of WrestleMania Backlash. And we will see you down the fucking road. Hey, network, that's the way we play. Get puppies. Hey, network, that's the way we play. Get all announcement has been paid for by the WZWA Network.